Welcome to Greg Norman's golf instructional video entitled The Complete Golfer. Part one focuses on the fundamentals of the long game. When I was 16 years old, I didn't know a golf club from a hockey puck. That's because back in those days, I was a typical Aussie kid. I loved the rugged outdoor sports. In 18 months, I went from a 27 handicap to scratch. In two years, I turned professional golfer. That's because I had the desire. I'm not saying I can give you the desire to play the game, but I can show you the basics and fundamentals of it. And that'll lead to two things, the improvement of your game and also the enjoyment. And let me tell you, that's one thing I do most in golf is enjoy it. Hi. What this video is all about is the basics and fundamentals of the game. And to me, I would never have achieved what I have in the game without knowing them. To me, the game of golf is fairly simple. If you stick to your basics, stick to your fundamentals, and feel the game yourself, and that is a key word, yourself, you're gonna learn a lot. So let's go to the practice tee right now. I'm gonna show you my basics, show you my fundamentals, and I'm gonna let you put them in practice on the practice tee. So come on, let's go. The grip. The most important part to get the natural feel and ready to play the game. Without the correct grip, you're not going to have the liaison between your body and the golf club. Now, there are many different ways of doing it, and most of it is basically up to you. You've got to keep it the most natural and simple way. Let me show you a few tips that I learned myself going through the hard ways of, of feeling the game out. Now, let's just take our golf club out of our hand, for example. Stand there, arms hanging down to your side. You notice at the back of your left hand, is pointing to your target. The palm of your right hand is also pointing to the target. So what we're trying to do now is just bend over and let our arms hang. Without a golf club in your hand, just put your two hands together. And basically you'll see that the back of your left hand and the palm of your right hand are working together facing towards the target, which is straight down the line. Now there are two reasons why we do this. The main reason is when you grip the most natural way, your club face is going to return square to the target. If you have a strong grip, which we'll get into later on, which is this grip where you see three or four knuckles, where the back of your palm is to the sky, and the palm of your right hand is also to the sky, you're going to create a motion with the club face that'll hook it impact, and that'll create a right to left shot, which we really don't want. And the other way, if you have a weak grip, which is the palm to the ground of both hands, of the right hand and the left hand, you're going to find you're going to have an open club face. The reason why that happens is always your natural reaction of your body, your wrist joints, your shoulder joints, your forearms, your elbows, are always going to return to your most natural position, which is this way. As we pointed out, when you let your arms hang, your palm's going to hang perpendicular to your shot. And that's where they're going to return at impact. And that's the most crucial part. If you can retain the most natural and relaxed feeling of the club face coming into the ball, you're going to retain a nice smooth motion and consistent motion through your grip. Okay, now you've got that in mind, let me go on to something else. When you stand there, again let your arms hang, we're going to put the club through the base of our fingers. Now what I call the base is where your fingers join your palm. You can practice this at home by just putting your forefinger of your right hand into your left hand and you notice I'm putting my first finger right across the base of my fingers where they join the palm. Now when I close that up, you can see again, I'm maintaining what I said originally, keep the palms as close to perpendicular to your shot. Okay, go to your right hand, the same deal, put your first finger, your left hand in your palm, right across where your fingers join your palm, close it up, 
and you notice the palm again points to the target. When we put our golf club in our grip, in our hand, you'll notice that we put it this way. Same principle, same way as you were practicing with your forefinger or both fingers, and just close it up. Now, when you get to the grip, we can also experiment another way. When you close the palm of your first finger, push your thumb down, you notice there's a nice little ridge that's formed in your palm. What we're going to do is we're just going to put our left thumb into there. Again, Mother Nature's made the perfect hands for us to play the game of golf, so why not use it? Close, push your palm again, push your thumb of your right hand down, you will create that groove, and then put your thumb into that groove. So when you put it on the golf club, all that does is, again, puts it there nice and comfortable. And now when we're going to do that, we're going to have our hands working as close together. If you get your hands working together or working as a unit or one unit, you're going to have simplicity. And that's what we need in the golf game. We don't need our hands fighting each other. We don't need our left hand over here and our right hand over here, which creates all sorts of problems with our alignment and our, our uh, way our arms hang at a dress. If we have one hand fighting the other, you're going to get a different type of motion and impact. So what we're trying to do is get our hands to work as one unit, as I mentioned before, and this is how we're going to do it. Get the hands close, okay? Now, the pressure points, let's talk about that. The first three, top three fingers of your top hand, which are these ones here, when you get to the top of the swing, they're the, they're the fingers that are going to hold on. Now, if you notice, if I let go of my little finger, right, it's going to go, the club is going to drop. So when that club drops, I lose all the pressure in my forearm, which loses all the pressure down the back of my shoulder and down my left side. If I keep that pressure in those three fingers, the club doesn't want to go down this way because I've got strength here in my forearms. A good way of practicing that or feeling it is just stand there, hold the golf club parallel to the ground, and just hold it with your three fingers, with your palm pointing to your target again. If you go straight down here, just lift it up, Move around here and you'll see these are pressure points. Now, underneath my left forearm or my top arm, I'm going to feel where the pressure is, right there. That is the crucial part. Now, go to the right hand. What we've got to do now is the same principle. Take your normal grip, take your left hand off the club. Now, with your palm there, you'll notice that the middle two fingers are going to be our pressure points. Do the same routine. Lift the club up parallel to the ground. You notice the palm of your right hand is still basically pointing to the direction where we want the ball to go. And you'll notice this time, instead of the pressure being under your forearm of your right hand, the pressure feels like it's on top. Now, this is very important because you notice all of a sudden you've got different muscle tensions for each arm, depending on your grip. Now, if your grip doesn't work together, obviously these different muscles are going to fight against each other. That's why we want trying to get these things consistent and as natural as possible. Okay, golf is a game of opposites. Why don't we think the more pressure I get under, the softer I'm going to grip the golf club. Caress the golf club. Just feel as though you just got all the, just milking the golf club. You, know, you just get your fingers on there and there's no pressure in there, you just milk it, milk it. You see all the great players in the world, they just don't stand there dead stock still with no motion in their fingers. Because if you do that, the more pressure, the more longer you stand there, the tighter and tighter and more tense you get. All the players, they milk it a little bit. They waggle their club. Their grip's always moving just a little bit. And all they're doing there is releasing the tension. Now, the tension in your grip, without the pressure, just normal day practice, just have enough pressure in there where if someone came along and gave it a good quick jerk with the golf club, and we'll show you right here, if someone came along and just jerked it out, it'll come out, OK? Now, the reason why we do that is that as you take the golf club back, you're going to find the pressure is going to naturally build up. And the further you go back, the more pressure is going to be generated in your fingers. Because obviously there's body motion. Whether you go to throw a golf ball or throw any ball or prepare to catch anything, you're going to be developing resistance. Muscles are getting ready to do that. Same with the golf swing. The, when you, as I said, when you take it back, the more pressure is going to get in there. And the further you go back, the more pressure is going to get in the top, as I said, the top three fingers right here. And that's where you've got to control your golf club. Control it at the top with these three fingers. As I said, let go of them. The club's going to do this. The back's going to go like this. And we're going to go <laughs> fat shot. No good. We don't want that. That's why our pressure, the start of the golf swing, if we start with the right pressure at the right time, 
We can develop all the way back here, get to the top of our swing, we feel fine. Now, we're going to go to the grip itself. Now, there's three or four different types of grips you can use. You can use the Varden grip, you can use the overlap grip, you can use a 10-finger grip. And I myself sort of didn't like any of those. And this is what you can do. Experiment for yourself, find out what feels most comfortable for you. If you've got short, fat fingers like a Nicholas does and a lot of players out there, they do the interlocking grip. If you've got long fingers, slender fingers, women, for example, fingernails, you don't want to stick them into each other, right? You do the overlap grip, which is this. Or if you don't like any of those, you can go to the 10 finger grip, which is taking all the fingers on putting it on the golf club, just like gripping a baseball, I guess, except gripping a baseball bat, the left hand, the thumb goes over the side. It doesn't stay on top. But 10 finger grip, a lot of good players have used that. It's just like that. All the 10 fingers are on the golf club. If you feel comfortable doing that, go ahead and do it. But remember the basics. Remember the natural progression of your hands at a dress position through your backswing. I myself came up with something that I, because I didn't like either one of them, I don't have short, fat fingers. I don't have long, skinny fingers. So what I did was one day I just experimented. I had my hands together like this, hanging down. And all I do is put my hands together like that. Put my little finger of my right hand between the first finger of my left, first and second finger of my left. So it just sits in there like that, right? So all I do then is when I close it up, these two fingers don't sit on the grip at all. They're not there. And another reason why I did that was if I do have my fingers like this, my two hands come very close together. And the closer you get them together, the easier it is to work as a one. Now, if you notice, my thumb on my left hand is not all the way down the shaft. It's as far up the shaft as I can get it. Now, here's a little practice routine you can do to feel that. And this is one of the reasons why I went to my grip, is the more I move my thumb up the shaft, the more pressure you can feel these fingers generating between the grip and your hand, and the more pressure you feel in your forearm. Now, I'm not going to pull it up so much where I'm choking myself and I have to release it. I'm just pulling it up. Now, do the opposite. Push your thumb down the shaft, and you see what happens. Your forearm wants to lift up. And the more it lifts up, the more it wants to separate your palm from your grip. So move your thumb up the shaft to get that nice, consistent, firm feeling in your left hand. And then all I did was lifted my, little, my first finger up on my left hand, put my little finger in there, and I could get my right hand as close as I could to my left. And that is the reason why I went to my, I don't know what you want to call it, inner mesh, I don't know. Uh, I did it myself, never saw anybody else to do it. I did it by feel, it felt comfortable to me, and that's what you've got to do with your golf grip. So whichever way you feel, get your grip right, go out and enjoy your game. Now that we've got the grip all squared away, let's talk about alignment, which is the next step in the game of golf. Now, what is proper alignment? Proper alignment is trying to get your body squared to the target the best you can. You see a lot of people stand with a closed stance. Bobby Locke comes straight to my mind, very successful golfer. Other people stand with a very open stance. Lee Trevino comes straight to my mind. Alignment basically is trying to keep your body parallel to where you want the ball to go. Relate yourself to a railway line. Just think you're standing over here, addressing the ball, and as you look down the target, if you look down railway lines, the tar they, they seem like they come to an imaginary point somewhere down there. That's what you've got to try and put in your mind with your alignment. When you look down at your target towards the flag, visualize two parallel lines, one where the ball is situated, one where your stance is situated. If you get yourself 
correctly aligned to parallel lines, you're going to focus on an imaginary point, which is the flag, and you're going to get your body in sync. Now, that is correct alignment is getting square, or as square as possible as you can. Now, another way you've got to think about it is it feels very unnatural for me from this position to turn my head and talk to you. The most natural way for me to do it is stand up and face you directly. Why not incorporate this into your golf game? When you get prepared to hit your shot, why not just turn around, put your club face towards the target. Remember, club face first, because that's the thing we want to hit the ball. We want a square club face. So we've got to get that square and aligned to the target straight away. So we put our club face down, get it aligned to the flag, and then stand with a very open body, right? So you want to stand there looking at your target, not looking this way, trying to get yourself square from this position because your eyes tell you how your body's going to get square. So let your eyes align your body to the target. Just keep staring at the target, OK? The routine that I always go through, club face down. Get it nice and square to the target. And when I look down, I'm just taking a quick scan across my body to make sure my <coughs> feet are fairly square to the shot I want to play, my hips are square to the shot I want to play. And once my hips are there, my shoulders are going to be in the same position. Get that nice square feeling straight at the target. Put that in your mind. And from there, we can go ahead and hit it. The next step in understanding the basics and the fundamentals of the game is the ball position. I've read in many magazines right through, right from when I was starting to play the game, that if you play a five iron, you play it in this position. If you play a six iron, you move it back in your stance, seven iron back a little bit more, eight iron, until you end up with a pitching wedge and you move the ball back maybe two inches in your stance to get to the middle. You know, I don't really agree with that. The idea of the game is to keep it simple to keep the basics simple, keep it natural, understand the game, feel it, repetition, repetition, understand which your five iron goes a certain distance, your seven iron goes a certain distance. That's why we have lofts on the golf club. Utilize the loft. If you move the ball back in your stance with a five iron and then move it back a little more with a seven iron, for example, let's say here's our five iron position right here. If we move it back, if we go to an eight iron, move it back an inch or whatever they tell you to do, you're doing a number of things. You're changing the loft on the golf club. You're changing your center of gravity. You're changing your arc of your swing. The more you have it back in this stance, the steeper and the more descending the blow of the club face on the ball. And as the sharper you come down on it, obviously, the less loft you're going to have. Take your club face. Remember how we got our alignment, club face there. And then put your left foot, just move it a little bit. And you'll find that as you look down, your ball is going to be in the same relative area, maybe from your left heel to an inch and a half into your stance. OK, now there's one little point we can do to check off our ball position and maintain the same place time and time again. Just as I'm, before I take my club head away from the ball, I take one little quick look. Now, what I do is I look, when I look down basically out of my right eye, this part of my left hand, the, where the thumb meets the uh, hand itself, covers my instep on my left foot. Now, if I maintain this every time with a five iron or a seven iron or a driver, I know my ball position is in the same place every time. And not only that, I know I'm going to have a nice continuation from my left shoulder down to the club head in a square line. So with ball position, maintain it in the same position all the time for every full shot.
balance and posture. This is what I call my comfort zone of the basic fundamentals. You know, everybody out there has got different ways of their physical structures, whether they're tall, whether they're short, whether they're fat, whether they're thin, weak or strong. But if we can get our balance, our posture, over the ball, it's going to make things so much easier. And that's why I call it the comfort zone. You people out there watching and trying to learn, this is going to be a big help for you because it's a very, very, very important part of the basic fundamental side of the game. Now, first of all, we don't really need a golf club. We're going to do this just by feel, by f just by getting up to the ball, visualizing it, and feeling it ourselves. First of all, when you stand there and talk to somebody, you don't stand there with your feet close together. You don't stand there with your legs spread wide apart. You stand there where you feel comfortable. So therefore, we just look at it standing here naturally. My stance is maybe a little too narrow for the golf swing, but I'm comfortable. I could really go up there and hit the golf ball right now from this position. Right, but now what we've got to do is look at our stance and utilize this and break it down to see whether we can rotate our body to the full extent to get our extension and then come down and keep our balance, right? So now our stance goes into another word called balance. We have to get our stance comfortable, but also at the same time get it to where a point is where the balance of the swing is going to be even and fluid right throughout the whole swing. So therefore, I'll just widen my stance a little bit. Now, I didn't go and widen it by three or four inches. I only spread my feet apart by maybe an inch. So from here, I've got a nice, perfect weight distribution. I've got 50% on my right foot, and I've got 50% on my left foot. So what I do now is I'm feeling, we're just talking about the stance now, nothing else. With, I've got the feeling of all my weight is running down the inside part of my legs. And the weight should be coming out through the instep of your left foot, and through the instep of your right foot. Now what this does is it anchors your swing through the whole sequence. Right, now we got that feeling. Now, you do not keep 50-50, like 50% 50 of your weight on the front of your feet or 50% of the weight on your back of your feet. You must have a little bit of your weight on your heels, a little more weight on your heels. Maybe it could be 65% of your weight on your heels, maybe even 70%, depending on how tall you are. Now the reason why we do this is one of the biggest faults in the game, and especially you people sitting out there, maybe not the pros, but people uh, sitting in the lounge room who only play once every six months or once every three weeks who are trying to improve, you lean too much into the ball. When you lean into the ball, you're gonna lose your balance coming down, right? Again, the word balance. We don't wanna lean into the ball. So if you put your weight back on your heels, maybe 65%, what you're doing is you can get your rump down to the ground. How many times have we gone to a friend's place, had a few beers or whatever we do, have a few cocktails and we sit down and talk at a bar and you squat on the edge of a bar stool. You don't sit all the way back, but you just lean back. That is a feeling you gotta have. Now the reason, another reason why I do this, when I come down for my downswing, I wanna keep my rump to the ground. I wanna keep my center of gravity close to the ground. The closer I can keep it to the ground, the more of a nice sweeping motion I can get through there. Now what we do is with that posture there, we think about our lower part of the body. We've got that nice and comfortable. Now we want to get the top part of the body. Just think of it this way. Just stand up with there with your straight back and pretend somebody's going to pitch a ball at you, right? You want to get down there and you want to brace yourself a little bit. You're just going to arch a little bit. You're going to wait for the impact. When that impact comes, you're not going to be way down here and you're not going to be leaning back. You're just going to be ready for it. So okay, from that position there, just let your arms hang. Right? You're leaning enough forward enough where you're not too far forward and you're going to fall on your face, and you're not too far back where you're going to fall on your back. You're just leaning there, ready to catch something or ready to stop something coming at you, and your arm's going to hang right down there, nice and comfortable. All right? From there, we just pick up the golf club and just let it drop into our left hand, or you can let it drop into our right. You notice I'm not going, pushing my hands forward to take the golf club or bringing my hands back to take the golf club. All I'm doing is taking the golf club to my hand, let it fall there, take my grip with my right hand, and from this position I'm relaxed, very relaxed. I've got no tension in my grip, I've got no tension in my forearms, I have, if there's no tension in my arms, I have none in my shoulder, none in the back of my neck, and none down my back or down my spine. You notice another important factor from the posture and balance is that my body is slightly behind the ball. My center of gravity is about here, in relation to the ball, not right on top of it. If my center of gravity was right on top of it, I'd have to be right here, or I'd have to move the ball back in my stance there. So that, that's an important part, because when you come into your downswing, 
you got to get in behind the ball. You, you, your arc of your swing's coming in behind there, little inside-out motion, and that's where your center of gravity plays a big part. So if your posture and your balance is not right, your downswing is going to be very difficult to get that center of gravity. So you'll probably feel as though your right shoulder may be a little bit lower than your left. It should be just falling in there, right shoulder a little lower your left, relaxed position, and from there, we can go ahead and hit it. One of the most crucial parts of the golf swing, and probably if not the most crucial part, is your first 18 inches in your takeaway. If you don't generate the right club head motion away from the golf ball, we're going to be in big trouble. And the reason why we're going to be in big trouble is if we take the club head away on the outside of the line, we're going to get in the wrong position at the top, thus changing our plane during our downswing. If we get it too far inside the line, A, we're going to get into a bad position inside here. We've got nowhere to go except over the top. So to me, the first 18 inches is very important. And to show you a little bit, I have my little playing partner here to demonstrate. Come on, son. Here you go. All right. Then we take a nice, soft, gentle grip, and we take him around the waist. I'm not squeezing him too tight, right? Smile. Yeah. And we take him back. And you notice when I take him back, I'm taking back one piece. I'm not picking him up like this. I'm not pulling him around on the inside. Little Gregory goes straight back, nice and relaxed, and the whole body moves away. There you go, son. Thank you. Go to mommy. Oh, you want to stay with daddy? That's OK. So what we saw then was nice, relaxed motion in the takeaway. The body went away from the ball, all in one piece. You notice from there to here, one piece. So that's where we're going to get the first 18 inches. And you also notice when you take the club head straight back, I have no wrist break. If I take my wrist and cock too early, you notice my club head is coming up, right? And that's obviously going to do one thing, and the most crucial thing, you're going to lose club head speed because you're going to lose your arc. The quicker you pick it up with wrist break, the less club head speed you're going to get, and obviously the shorter you hit it. Vice versa, if I take the book club head back with my right hand, what happens is the club head comes way too far in on the side of the line. And you notice what happens to my left wrist my left wrist starts to fold under. And what happens when it falls under is we get a closed club face in the first 18 inches. Vice versa.